Hi guys, welcome back to another GGF video. Today we're taking a look at the Deepcool Captain 120 all-in-one liquid cooler. Now this is from the uh, Deepcool's GameStorm range, so this is uh, sort of tiered towards their more high-end products. Uh, let's see what we got here. So this is, says it's a visual all-in-one cooler, so I can only assume they're talking about the way it's been designed with the, uh, the pump and the block. Uh, you can definitely see that uh, this is very unique. Uh, it seems to be one of a kind where the coolant actually goes out the tube and then back in. I've ne never really seen one like this and it's just something I interesting and if you're into modding or, or building nice looking rigs, it'll definitely uh, complement your build. And moving on to the top of the, um, the pump block, you also get this nice red sort of glowing lighting effect. So that's, all, that's also uh, nice to see that they've done this. Now that is stuck at red. Um, it seems to be that uh, Deep Cool's main theme these days is, is a lot of red items, so it does make sense to, uh, to keep that red. Um, I don't want to spend too much time just covering this. What I want to do is jump in, we'll see what's in the box, and then we're going to do some quick testing, and then we'll wrap it up. All right, first off, we'll take a look at the box. I've actually already taken the things out. There's probably no need to go over the items when they're in the box. So pretty much standard for an all-in-one uh, cooler box. We'll just have a quick look what we've got on there. Nothing much except for uh, one interesting area is they've given you the different angle views and the dimensions of, uh, of some of the main components. So we've got the dimensions of the radiator, dimensions of the pump and the block, uh, sort of things like that. Uh, some things I found uh, good was the sort of the height of the block. Uh, how, how wide it is, I guess that's good, but um, I'm wondering if they've got this on the website for you to have a look at instead of once you've purchased it, you might find that the block is too, the too wide for your board or something, but it is interesting that they have got this one in here, and we can see the thickness of the radiator is 27 millimeters, so that is quite thin for a um, full radiator. Apart from that, we've got the sockets uh, supported. So Intel, it'll support everything. 12775, I don't think that's important. And it'll support all your current uh, AMD sockets there. Uh, moving on to some of the specs. Not too much over on this side here. I'll probably go through uh, go through these specs as I go over each of the items. But just some few things that stand out. Fan airflow is 91 CFM. That's quite a lot. Uh, the fan noise level is nearly 40 decibels, so that's quite a lot. Um, the bearing type for the fan is fluid dynamic bearing, uh, so there is a nice fan. Uh, we don't have any pump specifications. I can't find, find anything on the flow rate, anything like that. We've got this pump, pump speed is uh, 3,400 uh, RPM, and it looks like it'll go down to 150 RPM, so you can adjust that, which is pretty cool. So yeah, apart from that, we don't have too much uh, info on the radiator and the pump. So, moving on to the, uh, to the unit itself, um, I've had a look into the radiator and on the website I found that it is aluminium. So that does uh, correspond to the fan being uh, such a high powered fan. So normally when you have an aluminium radiator, uh, you have a lot more uh, dense fin count. So by, by doing that, you need a more powerful fan which will push more air through it because normally with the copper radiator you can have half as many fins so you can have a fan that's half as powerful whereas this one being aluminium you need double the amount of fins and a more powerful fan so this will probably generate a little bit more noise. Um, moving on to the unit itself you can see this is quite an interesting design I haven't seen an all-in-one cooler that looks like this it's uh, totally different especially with this extruding tube that comes out and um, all I can assume is this just sort of goes from out to back in and um, it just gives a cool little effect. So it'll pretty, be pretty sweet to see uh, once this is on. And I believe it also lights up from around the top as well. So that looks really cool. All right, so apart from that, what we'll do is um, have a look at what else you get. So I've talked about a little bit about the fan, some of the more features about the fan. I actually noticed it's all rubber. All the sides are rubber. You can It's really stiff rubber, but you can definitely push, uh, push these down um, and th this might help with uh, uh, vibration and things like that. So that's pretty sweet now. And it is a nice sleeved uh, cable as well, and it is four pin. All right, now moving on to the uh, actual accessories you get. They've done a really good job on sort of detailing each, uh, each item you get. They've given each one in their little packet, as you can see, and they've actually named each little packet as well on there, which is a nice little feature. And you also get this nice little fold out manual and you also get a sweet little case badge. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna install this onto a board. I'm probably not gonna go through inst um, installing steps because it does take a while. We're gonna do an 1150 setup. So we're just gonna need the back plate. Uh, we're going to need the two, uh, 
the two side brackets for the um, for the pump and the block and I might take some photos along the way and I can just show you how, how this goes together and then we're just going to do some quick performance testing to see how this performs. So I've got our cooler on our motherboard. Now insulation was very very easy. Probably one of the quickest I've done. <coughs> we'll just run through on exactly what has to be done. So you can use the same backplate for Intel or AMD. They just use a slightly different config uh, which is pretty sweet. Then you just have to put the uh, locating screws that go through the through the motherboard to the other side so you put the four of those in then you just slide the locking rubber bracket down on each one as you can see there and then that'll all stay together as one unit then you simply slide that through your motherboard <coughs> then on the other side of the motherboard you slide in the four rubber sort of washers and this just holds the plate in and stops it from sliding back through once you uh, once you rotate your motherboard. Once you've done that, you just simply put the Intel bracket on the cooler. So you can see on the four on each side, you just screw that in. And then you just drop that down and you um, orientate it which way you want on your motherboard. And I've decided to go at the same way that the manual uh, points to, which you can see this way here. And then you just screw down the four locking sort of nuts and I just alternated each one on a diagonal basis and just did a few turns for each one until it was tight. You don't don't need to go overly tight. Uh, you don't need to screw it down as tight as you can go. It just needs to be firmly tight. And as you can see, that's the uh, that's the installed unit there. Now, when I first turned it on, there was a bit of pump noise, but um, I guess being the first time it's on, it just had a few air bubbles and whatnot in it. And you'll also notice that the fan I've connected is uh, via PWM. So once you start it up, it goes full ball, but now it's kind of adjusted to a, a, a sort of normal operating speed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the turn the system off and turn it on so you can hear how loud this fan actually goes. And um, I kind of guess if you had to have this running at full fan speed, you're probably not going to really want to have that on all the time because it is very loud. So I'll just grab the mic and you might not be able to hear me too well, but I'll put it near the fan here. Actually, I might just clip the mic just there. Uh, onto the fan. I'm not sure if you can see that. It might just move down a bit so you can. Not sure how. If that's picking up anything. Alright, so I've clipped the mic just onto the fan there. I'll turn the system off. Alright, so that's completely off now. Now we'll just uh, turn it back on. So you can certainly see how how much louder it is when the fans are full ball. So it's pretty much uh, I think it's nearly exactly double the um, the decibel rating from its lowest setting to its uh, highest setting. So bear in mind if you if you are going to have to run this at full fan speed, you might need to uh, maybe look at some different fans or or a different config. So what we're going to do now is just do some quick uh, testing. I'm not going to do anything too fancy. I'll probably just run Prime 95 and then just a benchmark just to see. We are running a 4770K in here. Uh, we'll test it at stock and then we'll just do a slight OC and we'll see how this uh, this unit runs. Now I don't really have anything to compare it with because I, I don't normally do uh, do too many benchmarks so I don't really have a, a catalogue of other coolers so it's just going to be a purely uh, just temperatures based on this CPU. All right, so moving on to some of the uh, testing results. I didn't do too much testing, uh, mainly because of my videos and my reviews. I don't really have a long, a large catalog of uh, sort of cooler reviews and temperatures. And unfortunately, now is a pretty bad time because we've actually hit a really cold spell. So the temperature as of late has been around 10 to 15 degrees. So that is really quite cold. Uh, so even if I did have a, a lot of results, it would have completely thrown that out out of the window. So my ambient temperature sort of testing this cooler was around the, uh, the 12, 13, 14 degree area, which is relatively cool. So um, these results definitely wouldn't sort of uh, reflect your results if you went out and bought this and you lived in somewhere else. Or even if you lived here at a different time of the year where it can get up to like, like the 25s to 30s. So... Um, so jumping in into the results, I just really did two. I did um, a stock and then I did a, um, an OC test and then I did it at idle and then I just went straight to a Prime 95. I thought, well, there's no point testing a few games because all games are different. I just wanted to choose something that would give you the highest 
um, the, the, high, the highest heat draw out of this. So for our, our overclock, we got it to just a basic 4.3 gig. Uh, we didn't have to change anything. We just le left the, uh, the voltages at auto and it went straight to 4.3. So our idle temperatures, uh, we, we left the system running for about 30 minutes, just, just doing nothing. And at for stock, we were at 25 degrees Celsius, and then the OC was 27 degrees Celsius. So that is relatively cool. But um, then again, when saying uh, talking about idle temperatures, like I don't re I don't really go by idle temperatures myself because you can get most uh, most air coolers can do a uh, a pretty good job on idle. It's when you start bringing out that heat that uh, it depends how good the cooler is to get rid of that heat. So moving on to the Prime 95 test, we had this running for uh, 25 minutes. So at our stock, we got at um, stock uh, 3.5 gig. Uh, I don't, don't think I mentioned the CPU was a 4690K. I did. I thought I had a 4770, but we used a 40, uh, 4690. So at, um, at stock, it's 3.5 gigs. So we hit 62 degrees Celsius after the 25 minutes. That was the max temperature. And then at our OC, it was 68 degrees. So those are very, very reasonable temps. Uh, they are, w are well within the Intel uh, spec threshold for that, but, um, but bear in mind the a ambient temperature was quite cool, so it's really hard to get an exact figure and a figure that you might get at home. Um, so that was it, it, it for the testing. I was, uh, I was impressed with those results considering how small the, uh, the radiator is on this system. Uh, it's definitely not as large as some of the others. Um, apart from that, I did just want to go through some of the things I did like. I, I really like the way how this is put together, how easy it is to assemble, uh, the quality parts used. I, I really do like the, uh, the aesthetics and the different look to the uh, the block and the um, the pump and then the red light. It really sort of sets it apart uh, to the others. I really did like the fan, the, the rubberized around the fan, but one negative bit that I didn't really like was the noise. I guess with the radiator being um, the radiator being the aluminium, uh, more fins per inch. I think it was up to nearly the 20 fins per inch, as whereas a, a copper radiator you can have much less, so you don't need as much uh, much air force uh, pushing through it. So that's sort of my my only downside. Whereas if you do need to crank the fan up, it will ge generate a bit of noise, but it, it wasn't completely bare, uh, bearable. So just uh, just keep that in mind if you do look into uh, purchasing this. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Just want to thank uh, Deep Cool for sending, in, sending this out. And thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time.